Hi, this is Frank Buck, and this is the place to be if you want to get organized and make it look easy. Today, we're going to talk about how to create a robust content calendar. Creating blog content used to be a lot easier when I started in the fall of 2004. Keep a list of ideas, pick an idea, and write about it. Schedule a date for it to publish, and you're done. Later, the idea of adding a nice picture to the post was introduced, followed by the idea of superimposing the title of that post onto that picture. As I started to write a weekly column for the Daily Home, the process included modifying the blog post to repurpose it as a newspaper column. Along the way, people suggested to start a podcast based on the blog post, and the latest edition is YouTube what you're seeing right now. YouTube opens an opportunity to demonstrate a technology like what you're going to see in just a moment. There are lots of steps. People often make the decision to read or not to read an article based solely on the title. Therefore, more time goes into crafting the title of an article than you might think. Um, when you search Google and you see a little description of whatever it may be, well, crafting that description is another one of the steps that we go through. What you're seeing right now went through at least 18 different steps from the idea to publishing as a blog post, a podcast, what you're seeing on YouTube, the newspaper, or various social media channels. Those steps aren't hard. But if I describe to you each step, and you're gonna see those steps in a moment, you'd wonder how I keep it all straight. And in truth, many of the steps aren't hard. The challenge is keeping up with what's been done and what is still left to do and organizing it in a way that it happens in a timely manner. A content creation calendar is something that helps me stay organized and it allows me to use a time management technique called batching. It's the idea that handling a bunch of similar items at one time accomplishes them quicker than if they were done in isolation. You get in a groove. And so what I do is craft titles for four blog posts at one time. I publish one piece of content each week. So at the beginning of the month, I want to have four blog posts for podcast, for YouTube videos, for newspaper columns, all ready to go for that next month. The content creation calendar is how I'm able to do it. Now, a lot of people have these, but what I'm going to show you is different from anything I have seen before in terms of the kind of things it does. So without further ado, let me share my screen. Let me bring up my content creation calendar. It seems to be exactly what I'm talking about. Here we go. This is not a mock-up. This is my exact content calendar. So let me just go through the columns that I have, tell you why, why I have what I have, so that you can do the same kind of thing if you're producing blog content, video, or if you have a similar project where you can use this kind of thing in your job. First of all, as I mentioned, I produce new content once a week. For me, it's every Tuesday. A new blog post goes live. Uh, the following day, it appears as a newspaper column. When that uh, blog goes live, it goes also live on YouTube and as a podcast. So here in this first column, I just have the Tuesday's date. And if you look up here, just a little formula that adds seven to whatever's before it. So as we go through here, I'm not having to type all of these dates. It's just adding seven to whatever is before it. Column B, the theme or holiday. To kind of help keep myself straight on what holidays are coming up or what celebrations are coming up so that I might better be able to tie the theme of what I'm writing into what's happening in the world, uh, here's just a little place for me to put that, that kind of thing. Next is the, the post title. Now, sometimes a, a lot of these are just ideas and I'll just throw it in the title, the, uh, in that column C in that post title. As I scroll down further, uh, here are just a bunch of ideas that are coming up. These aren't necessarily what will wind up being the, the exact title 
of the post. But when I have nailed down that post title, see over here in column H, anything that's green means that I have established that as the title that is going to actually be the one. The, the decision on what the title has uh, is has been made. Now, you notice it's green and you're probably thinking, well, I go and I just color that square green. Actually much easier than that. Let's go down to here and let's see, uh, let me pretend that this title is what I'm gonna actually use. I'm gonna come over here and just hit G. Boom, and watch it turn green. What is actually happening here and with many of the columns is what's called conditional formatting. If I click on one of these columns, over here on the right, you see the conditional formatting that's happening. Now, if it's not showing on yours, if you go to the data menu and you go down to, I'm sorry, it's not data, it is format, and down to conditional formatting, then this column will appear over here. And what it's saying is this, if the text in that square is the letter G, then turn the font green and make the shading of the background of that cell that same, uh, that same green. So actually what's in all of these squares is the letter G, but because it's in a green font and the background is the same shade of, of green as that um, letter, it appears that it's just a, a solid green um, square. All right, going on to some other things regarding the title. Um, you know, I read a lot of different things and there's a suggestion for the best length of titles that sort of six is the best. So as I'm typing a title, first of all, there's a little formula up here. It's counting how many words are in that title. And then you can see over here at the right, the conditional formatting, if the value is more than 11. So if, if it's more than 11 words long, it turns it red to tell me, Frank, make this thing shorter. Uh, if it's nine or 10, it's gonna be yellow. If it's anywhere from four to eight, it's gonna be green. And if, uh, if it's anything from zero to three, uh, it's going to be in red. So uh, you see all of these look good. Now down here, that's not actually what I'm gonna call that one. Uh, but if I were to leave it like that, oh gosh, only two words long. Uh, same thing with the number of characters. Right about 55 is what I've said is, is really the optimum number of characters. So here, this is actually counting the number of characters that are in the title and giving me an idea of if I'm in the ballpark or if I'm close or if I'm just way, way far off. And again, here's the conditional formatting over here that uh, is making those squares turn green or yellow or red. Um, the next column, these emotional uh, power or emotional words, and like you can see, this one says 14%. There's a formula here, and it's looking at this next tab, where I found a list of power and emotional words and just pasted it in here. What this is doing is telling me that the title converts a little better, that it, it's more appealing to people if you have some power and emotional words in the title. So this is letting me know, do I have any of those? And it's just a formula that you can see here that's pulling from that next tab. All right, next, the focus keyword. Yep, when I, produce this post. When I write this post, uh, I use a little plugin called Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T. And it is a wonderful thing to have because it really prompts you to do some specific things within that post. And one of the things that it's going to ask me for is, what's the focus keyword or key phrase? In other words, what is this particular post all about? Since I know it's gonna ask me for that, I just go ahead and put it here. Because what I'm gonna be doing is working on four posts at a time. Today, I'm recording this video. I've already recorded 
two more earlier this morning. I've got one more to go. Even before that this morning, I recorded four podcast episodes. Yesterday, I wrote the four blog posts that go with them and the four newspaper columns. I work on one month of content at a time. So what I'm doing is I'm writing all of the text back to back. I'm doing all the featured images back to back. I'm nailing out what the titles are going to be one after another. Now, while we're on titles, let me show you one little thing that is gold. Here's this tab, and if you can read it, it's coschedule.com slash headline dash analyzer. Coschedule.com slash headline dash analyzer. When I have an idea for the title of a blog post, I'll type it here. So let's say uh, I'm doing a blog post on, oh, I don't know, how to mow the front yard. Uh, so let's say we're going to call it mowing the front yard, and we'll say analyze. And here's what it does very quickly. It gives me a score of 53, which is actually not very good. It tells me that 25% of the words that I've used are common words, 25% such as year are uncommon, no emotional or power words. And as I scroll down, it's saying that uh, it's, it's a bit short. I've only got four words. That's a little short. I've only got 21 characters. That's a little short also. Hmm, not very good. Let me go back and say, what you need to know about mowing the lawn. Let's just see if there's any difference. Big difference. Uh, notice it's now green. In other words, they're telling me that's a very good score. 33% common words, 44% emotional words. As I scroll down, it says your headline's the right link. Headlines with approximately six words tend to earn the highest number of click-throughs. Uh, 43 characters, your headline is the right link. Headlines 55 characters long tend to earn the highest number of click-throughs. So if I got a score like that, what that's saying to me is, Frank, that's a good title. So I just come over here and paste it. Now you see why I do four at a time, because while I'm on that site, I'm going to take the other three that I'm working on, throw those in there, get good titles for those, and then I'm done with the titles. Let's see, we've talked about column A, B, C. Column D is just a place for me to throw some little notes that I uh, just want to have in mind as I'm writing the post. Uh, that brings us up through J. We've established in column I our, our focus keyword. Another thing that Yoast is going to do is going to ask me for a meta description. This is going to be the thing that if this, if this turned up in a Google search, it would be the little description that you would read. Uh, 155 characters is sort of like the gold standard. So whatever I have here, it's telling me in this column how many characters I have, and it's turning the various colors depending on whether I have the right number or not. Uh, let's see if I have anything less than 121 characters, it's going to be red. If I have anything between 121 and 157, it's going to be green. And after 158, it's going to be red. Um, the next thing, and Yoast is also going to kind of gig me if I don't do this. Did I have my keyword somewhere in the meta description? So while I'm here, instead of having Yoast tell me that, I have this tell me. So what this is, what this green is telling me is somewhere in column J is going to be the focus keyword that I mentioned in column I. For example, in this one, uh, the focus keyword, Windows Clipboard History. So in the meta description, 
let's take copy and paste to a new level. Windows clipboard history appeared in October 2018. So you can see that I did include the key, uh, um, the focus keyword in the meta description. And the green is telling me that I did that here. Next, have I gotten the text written? Yes or no? So you can see for all of these posts through the next month, the text has been written and then stops here. All I'm doing is if I've written the text, I hit the G key and the conditional formatting says if the value of that cell is G, turn the font green, make the background of the cell green. Next, the featured image. On my blog post, I want to have a, a nice image. I like Pixabay as a place to get those images, but instead of going there to get one, I'll go there to get four. Find one for each of the blog posts that are coming up and just download those. And then um, what I want to do is take the title of the blog post and superimpose it on that photo and then put the uh, the address from a website, frankbuff.org. You can do a couple of things. You can pull that into uh, PowerPoint and put a little text box on top of the image or Canva is a great place to just drag each of the images into the rectangle. I like to use the rectangle for a, a uh, YouTube thumbnail. Let me just show you that. Canva.com and when it comes up, if I just type YouTube thumbnail and say blank, Then here's the box that's just the right size for a YouTube thumbnail. I'll drag the image I want uh, onto the screen and then add text on top of that. Okay, back to the content creation calendar. When I have those done, then I'll, I'll turn those uh, green. Image compression. Uh, sometimes the image can be a little bit on the large size. So while I'm working with image, images and I've got those four images downloaded, I'm going to run it through this image compressor. And notice when I, I even have a little hot link here, click, and it takes me to image compress, imagecompressor.com. I just drag all four of those images here. It compresses the file size, lets me download them. So I do all four of them at one time to batch that content. Um, the next thing I do is upload all four of those images into my website and make them the featured image for each of those posts. When I've done it, I just type the letter G and make the background of, uh, of that cell turn green. The next column over says uh, featured image imported into constant contact. Every week I email my list and the most important thing that I'm doing in that email is telling my subscribers about the content for that week that they're going to find on the blog, on uh, Anchor, which is where I post my um, audio, the podcast, and also to YouTube. So in, uh, I, I want to put that picture, the same one that I'm using with the blog and so forth, the YouTube thumbnail, I want to put that into that newsletter. So instead of putting those in there one at a time, instead of logging into Constant Contact four different times to drag each one of those pictures in there, I just drag all four of them there in it at one time. And then as I compose those newsletters over the next four weeks, the image is already in there. Uh, the audio created, as I've told you, this content is also a podcast. So I just sit and back to back record the audio for all four of those. And then at one time, I'm going to upload all four of those to anchor.fm where those are housed. Uh, the same thing with the video. I do my video. Uh, it uh, it is recorded on Zoom. I'll sit and do 
all of them. In fact, right now, what I'm doing is I'm on Zoom, but instead of a meeting with someone else, it's just me talking to you in the cam, and I've hit the record button. If I make a mistake, I just keep going. And believe me, I make plenty of mistakes because I record the whole thing in one go. And then when I click to stop and I end the meeting, it, um, it turns all that into the nice audio and video. Uh, I then take the finished product from that with all its mistakes and pull it into a little video editor. I use Shotcut, it's free for Windows. And that's where I go through and start cutting out all of my mistakes so that hopefully you're getting something that is of good enough quality that you'll stick with me through this. And I hope that you're liking the content and the nuts and bolts that you're getting through here right now. So again, as I'm doing those things, as they're completed, I can put the little G's so that those turn green. Uh, I upload all four of them in one sitting to YouTube. Um, the newspaper column, I take the text of the blog post, edit all four of them in one sitting to make them newspaper columns, print them all out, have my wife proofread them in one sitting. Let's see, uh, having them scheduled, I want to make sure that I have the blog post scheduled, have each of those four uh, scheduled to go out on the right date, uh, have some social media that is... Um, composed to help advertise those and then have I composed the email that I'm sending to my news uh, my newsletter list and then uh, this last the publish column indicates that this has now been published to YouTube the podcast the blog etc so anything that's green has already been up and published and then the very last column here is the URL of that content. Now notice as I scroll to the top, the farthest it's scrolling is this one right here because I have this published column filtered. If I say, let's see everything, including the things that are the letter G, boom, and now I can scroll up and here is every, everything I've done since I started this content creation calendar back in January 3rd of 2017 so three years i've been using this particular idea along the way i've added more things in here back uh, when i first started this some of these things i wasn't tracking if it's black it means that was something i just did not do so i have some conditional formatting that says if i type the letter b uh, turn the background of that cell black and now I, this is useful for so many things as I go through the week. Uh, if I need some show notes to put into that YouTube video, a great place to grab a sentence or two is this little meta description. And if I want to put a link back to the blog post, I have it right here. So all of that is in one place. For a long time, I thought about having a content creation calendar and just never did. I could never go back right now. And I make this video today, not because it's the only one you're gonna find on a content creation calendar, because there are plenty out there. But what makes this one different are the formulas that are in here and the conditional formatting. Most of what I've seen has been little boxes that you check it, that you've done it, and if you haven't done it, it's unchecked. As you can see, this goes so much farther than that. So now how does this apply to you? Do you have a blog? Are you writing uh, a newspaper column? Are you writing, are you a preacher and you're having to come up with a sermon every week? Are you in an organization where you have to give routine speeches? All of those things, there are gonna be steps involved and I think this is something where a content creation calendar could help keep, it gives you a parking place for future ideas. And for those things that you need to be doing now, it lets you know what steps have been done and which steps haven't been done. And it's all in one nice, neat place. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you use something like this? And how is yours maybe a little bit different from mine? Is this something that you'd like? And let me ask this, is this enough value that I need to do a follow-up? 
is this of enough value that I need another video where we go through the formulas and I help you a little bit with shaping the formula so that it is uh, what I have here. I don't know. You're going to be the ones that, uh, that tell me. Thanks so much for hanging in here. This has been a little bit longer video than I normally make, but I hope I've given you the specificity that's going to help you. This has been Frank Buck, helping you get organized and making it look easy.